Let's see. I need a new TV. Oh, Cyber Monday. Cool. All right, let's check this out. TVs. Sweet. <laughs> let's see here. Hmm. Whoa, 70 inches. LED, smart TV, nice. See what we got here. Oh yeah, you know I'm adding that to cart. Nice. Add to cart. $14.99. Nice. Let's check out. Hmm. Let's see. I actually need two TVs. Got one in the living room, got one in the family room. Maybe I'll get two. Let's see what happens. Huh. My bill just went up. Hmm. What happens if I get three? $14.99.99 each. It's almost $3,000. What if I get three? $4,500. I don't know if I have that kind of money. Huh. Interesting. $14.99 each. Three of them. Total bill almost forty five hundred. Interesting. All right, so what we were looking at in the video was something that we're buying in multiples. Okay, and so for the TVs, that's a lot of money to spend, obviously. And it's an example of you know, you buy one, it's this much, two is this much, three is this much. The example they give us in the book is, is about pencils. So let's look at this. Carlos doesn't need, doesn't know the price for pencils, but he wants to buy some. So he asks his classmates if they know how much pencils cost. Angela says she bought two pencils for 50 cents. Paige bought three for 75. Spencer bought four pencils for a dollar. And so working backwards, Carlos is trying to figure out, well, how much do these pencils cost? Maybe you see it right away. But if we say, you know, two of them are... 50 cents, three of them are 75 cents, four of them are a dollar. Maybe you see that they're going to be 25 cents each or a quarter each. Well, let's look big picture. Let's think about this for a second. Because what's in a rule, really? And so what we're saying is, if I am given a number of pencils, could I tell what the price is? And so kind of what they go through is, what if I said, you know, I got two pencils or three or four, um, and the total cost was 50 cents here, and this was 75, and this was a dollar. Well, you know, I don't quite know my rule yet, right? Or maybe I do. Maybe I can say it um, something like this. 50 cents each, okay? And it's 50 cents each for all these different quantities. Well, what if I said, I don't know how many pencils I want to buy, but I'd like to know how much they are each. Are they still, sorry, this should be 25 cents. There should be 25 cents. So if I buy X pencils, whether it's 100 or you know 200 or seven or 17, are they still 25 cents each? And that's the question I'm asking. You know, if I'm still buying, if I'm buying these in bulk or in smaller quantities, are they still 25 cents each? And the answer is, it seems by what we've already seen that yes, that's the case. That no matter how many you buy, they're 25 cents each. Well, if we're 
writing that as a rule, what does that mean? Well, in each case, I've taken x pencils, whether it's two or three or four, and kind of plugged it in. And so my rule is going to be 0 0.25 times x, where x is the number of pencils. And the rule's good, it seems, for all quantities of pencils. So what if I said I want 12 pencils? Well, I'd have 25 quarter, 25 cents, so 0.25 times 12 would give me $3. And that rule is still good. So the rule happens, and I buy 12 pencils, it's $3. I buy four pencils, it's a dollar. Okay, and so I guess what we're studying now is what is a function? A function is really a machine, and I like to think of my machine in terms of two arrows. And the arrows look like this. On one side, we have the input. Okay? Uh, uh, the input is the, the numbers that we put in. That would be like the two pencils, or three pencils, or four pencils. And then something happens in the middle here. And that's going to be like the we multiply it by 25 cents, or those TVs, we multiply them by 1,500 each. So my rule is what happens in the middle here, and it takes the input, and it does something to it. So I put in two pencils, I multiply it times 25 cents each, and then what comes out, the answer, is called the output. Or what comes out of the rule. Or the answer. The machine can only do one thing. Multiply by 3, multiply by 25 cents, divide by 5. And so a function assigns exactly one output to each input. What does that mean? Well, it means how much money would you pay for four pencils if they were 25 cents each? Well, we know that answer from up top. So I'd have four quarters, so it'd be one dollar. So the question is, could it ever be two dollars? If my rule is 25 cents each, could four pencils ever cost two dollars? No. Could it be... 50 cents. I'm not talking about sales. I'm talking about the rule. Would four pencils at 25 cents each ever cost 50 cents? No. One answer per input. Okay, so four pencils. If I go up and I say, hey, I want four pencils, and they say, it's a dollar. And then my friend comes up and says, I want four pencils, and they say, ah, it's six bucks for you. No. The rule is the rule. Okay. And what we do with this is we use a mapping diagram. Well, you need to draw a little hoop around this. And what this is talking about, these are the inputs. And these are the outputs. And my rule does this. This is all part of the thing. 1 goes to 2. And we give you this information. 3 goes to 8. And 7 goes to 6. So I'm asking... Is this a function? I'm not asking you what the function is. I'm asking, is it a function? Well, what's the definition of a function? It assigns one one output per input. So the question is, is there one output per input? Well, two is the output of one. Six is the output of seven. Eight is the output of three. So yes. It's a function because it has one output per input. Okay, so only when one thing goes in, only one thing comes out. Let's look at another example. In this one, we've got a similar situation. So here's my input. 
and here's my out. And we're saying that 0 maps to 1, 2 maps to 4, 2 maps to 5. So here's the question. One, and that didn't continue, one output per input. Think about it in terms of pencils. If I buy zero pencils, it's one dollar. Doesn't make sense. But if I buy two pencils, for me it's four dollars, and he buys two pencils, for him it's five dollars. That's not fair. Okay, so the answer for this one is no. Two outputs for two. There's two outputs for two, so when I have two outputs for a single input, that means that I have not a function. It's not a function. What about the other way around? What if I had all of these inputs? Okay. And they all mapped to the same output. You want to buy one pencil? Four bucks. Two pencils. Four bucks. Three pencils. Four bucks. Well, that is a, is a function. Okay, that's just a fact. Is a function. Because multiple inputs to one output is okay. That's a function. That can happen. That is a function. So you have multiple outputs to one input. That's okay. That's a function. And so what we do with this is we take these tables and we're going to say, okay, determine if it's a function. And so in your own mind, you should be saying this. Instead of bubbles now, these mapping diagrams, we're going to have... You know, 5 goes to 7, 10 to 6, 15 to 15, 20 to 2, 25 to 15. So we're looking for repeats. Well, where do they repeat? Um, let's see, 5 to 7, no more 5s over here. 10, no more 10s. i got this one, and I've got this one. See, I've got 15s as the output. So I have to ask myself this question. Is it... Is it one output per input? Okay. Is it one output per input? So when I put in 15, I get 15. Do I ever put in 15 and get something else? No. So yes, this is a function. Because outputs can repeat. So outputs can repeat. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. It's whether we're buying TVs, you know, I didn't put in three TVs and get 4,500 and then later I went back and three TVs were, you know, 60,000 or something like that. So one output per input. Let's look at this next one. Once again, I'm going to draw my map. One goes to 10, five goes to eight, four goes to six, one goes to four, seven goes to two. Well, let's look for repeats. Um, 1 goes to 10, and 1 goes to 4. One output has two, sorry, one input has two outputs. Not a function. You walked up, you said, I want one pencil. They said, that's 10 bucks. And later you came up and said, one pencil, that's four bucks. And you go, what? That doesn't make any sense. Okay? It doesn't make any sense. So you have one input. It's got to have exactly one output. You can't ever change the output. Otherwise, it's not a function. Okay? That's the basics of identifying functions from tables and mind maps. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.